This is as Congress, the political portico that reaches into the Congresses and parliaments throughout the world. Our objective is to bring you closer to the members of Congress, those here in the United States, as well as those throughout the entire world. It's an opportunity for you too to sound off to your congressman because it's interactive today. And I'm very happy to welcome on the Congress, on Ask Congress today, Congressman Walter Jones from the 3rd District, North Carolina. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be on your show. I think I've maybe been on twice, and, yes. and uh, this is my second time, and it's an uh, honor to be with you as a, yourself, a former member of Congress, and many things you've done since you were in Congress and well, been very successful. So I'm honored to be on your show. Thank you so much. Well, I served with your father. <laughs> That's what I understand. And uh, my father served here for 26 years. He, like myself, from eastern North Carolina. And um, he was a Democrat. I'm a Republican. But uh, my father did serve for 26 years, and he was a great teacher for me. He used to tell me, Mr. Wolf, and you've heard it many, many times, that uh, you vote your conscience, uh, your constituency, and your party third. Uh -huh. And I do that, well, but it gets me in trouble. It gets you've me in demonstrated trouble. that. But you were a Democrat before you were a Republican. Right. right. I changed party affiliations <clears throat> in uh, 1993. Um, I am very strong in my faith. I am a believer that uh, the baby is a gift from God. Uh, I believe the words in the Bible that man marries woman. And I, at that time, I saw the Democratic Party going too far to the left, and the uh, Republican Party advocated the social values that I believe in. Uh, and the, they also, but I've gone away from this, to believing in less spending <laughs> and less government. So that's not the strong suit of the Republican Party that it was when I joined in 1993. How, how do you look at the Republican Party today? Uh, Mr. Wolf, if I could change one thing about Washington, it's the influence of money. Um, both parties, uh, ever since Citizens United, which I think was a horrible decision, uh, I, I see more and more of the policy decisions getting to the floor of the House for a debate and a vote that are influenced more about money than the people. And Congress should be the, the uh, servant of the people. And yet, it's gone away from that. And uh, I would like to see sometime, probably I'll be gone, uh, but I would like to see some voluntary system of public financing. Uh, it's more partisan than when I was here. Absolutely, no question that. about it. Uh, is there any chance that there be more in the way of, of, of cooperation? I, I'm not very optimistic, and the reason for it, I go back to a statement I just made. I see the uh, uh, influence of money directing policy in the House, and the policy should be directed by the will of the people. And until you change the influence of money, I don't know how you change the policy. Well, one thing you've been very much interested in is our service people. I know that you have been. And protecting their interests. Uh, it seems that there's almost a cavalier uh, attitude directed toward the service people. And it's not only the, those that are serving, but their families as well. Well, uh, you know, for me, <coughs> again, you mentioned my father, who you serve with. Uh, he always had a great staff. And I have always felt that the privilege to serve the people in my district, which is the third district of North Carolina, uh, I am their servant, and my staff is their servant. And we're here to try to make their life better. If they call upon us uh, for, you know, Social Security, veterans issues, you know, so many issues that a congressional office might be called uh, for assistance, but to me, uh, taking care of the people back in the district is the most important responsibility I have. But it, and the other part of it, uh, as you say, uh, taking care of the people in your district, so many families are torn apart by what has been going on of recent years. And you have gotten involved in the idea of uh, a, a, a new piece of legislation on the question of Afghanistan. Right. Uh, I 
have been very frustrated. I have Camp Lejeune Marine Base in my district, and I talked to a lot of the Marines. Many have been over to Afghanistan four or five, six times. They don't think anything's going to change. We've already spent over $800 billion in Afghanistan. Uh, we've had over 2,000 Americans killed, 20,000 wounded, and, and uh, we've been there 16 years. I don't know what we can accomplish. Uh, history has proven that Afghanistan will never become a nation. Uh, the strength of Afghanistan is they have tribes. They don't have a central government at all, even today. So after 16 years and that many young Americans killed and wounded, I don't know what we're trying to accomplish. So I have introduced a bill. I've been joined by John Gary Mindy from uh, California, a wonderful human being. And uh, we got right now uh, three or four Democrats and three or four Republicans. We just put the bill in a week ago. What the bill will do is say that Congress should have a debate on the future of Afghanistan. That debate would say either that the bill says that if it should become law, meaning signed by the president, then there would be a year that we would start bringing back our troops and our assets. There would be uh, waivers in there that if the president says, no, we need to stay longer or we need to have a few more troops here or there, but we do have a protection of a waiver, but uh, nothing's going to change there. The Russians are being encouraged by the former president, uh, Hami Karzai, to come back to uh, Afghanistan. Uh, we just need to start rebuilding America and stop trying to rebuild these other countries. Uh, I do believe in fighting ISIS. I have no problem with that. I'm all for that. But in Afghanistan, uh, I've been on the floor many times talking about the fact that the Department of Defense spent $6 million to buy nine goats, nine goats for $6 million. The goats are from Italy. They have a certain texture to their fur. Bring them down to north to uh, uh, Afghanistan to start a, a farm, <laughs> and they can't even find the goats now. John Sopko said, I don't know where they are. Uh, in addition to that, I wrote Ash Carter, who's now retired as the Secretary of Defense, an article was written where they had been paying over 200,000 Afghan soldiers who they can't find, and they call them ghosts. And so how much more can the American people afford to spend in a country that we're not going to change and our young men and women still from time to time get killed or from time to time have a leg blown off or an arm? Well, taking part of devil's advocate for a moment, if you pull out of, <coughs> you pull out of there, what is the course from that point? Well, I think it's up to the <laughs> Afghan people. I mean, uh, the Afghan people can, can shift for themselves. Uh, we can't even secure our borders here in America. How are we going to worry about a country that's 10,000 miles away? It just doesn't make any sense. I'm like uh, Ron Paul. Uh, my whole um, foreign policy belief is this. Uh, if you're attacked, you go after the attacker. But for trying to build democracies around the world, it, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to turn the tribal situation uh, back no. uh, in, in any way. And, and we can't build them into our own image. Mr. Wolf, we cannot. And I think, again, the American people and our men and women in uniform deserve to know that we appreciate them. We need a strong military, but we've got to be much smarter in our foreign policy, in my opinion. How long do you think it would take uh, to get us out of there? Well, if this bill would pass, uh, it would say within a year after it's signed into law by the president that we would start the process of bringing our troops home. Just recently in the paper it said that Mr. Graham, Senator Graham and Senator McCain want to send 8,000 more troops over there. I mean, we don't even have these debates on the floor anymore. You did when you were in Congress, but we don't now. I'm going to have to cut away from sure. you for a moment while our local stations uh, kick in. And then we'll be back again to you. Thank you.
We've been talking to Congressman Walter Jones, the third district of North Carolina. You pardon my my hoarse voice today. Oh, that's, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, but we've been talking about the question of Afghanistan and the costs that are involved in that. And that gets us to another part. How do we do all these things that have been forecast? Infrastructure, many of the things that we want to do uh, within our own budget. Where do we stand today? The Republicans used to have a, a uh, point of the fact that we have a balanced budget. Mr. Wolf, I don't know anymore. I tell people back in the district that our debt now, not talking about the deficit, but the debt is well over $19 trillion. So those who might be watching this show or listening, uh, when Bill Clinton left office, I was here in Congress at that time, the debt was $5.6 trillion in 2000. Here we are 17 years later, and it's well over $19.8 trillion. America cannot continue to go down this road and not pay its bills without some type of economic collapse. That, again, is why I mentioned the waste of life and money in Afghanistan. We need to get smart about how we're going to spend our money and rebuild our own country. And yet there are those in Washington, in both parties, that want to spend, 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 and like it seems like no one ever wants to have a pause to rethink the policy. Once you have a policy, you just keep spending money and funding it. You don't. That's why, again, this bill that Mr. Gary Mindy and I have put in says after 16 years, we need to debate our future involvement of Afghanistan. I don't know if I can get the leadership to get the bill to the floor, but we're going to try. Uh, you couldn't run a business that way that we're running government. No, you cannot. And... And all these, the growing debt is going to strangle programs in America, programs for senior citizens, for veterans, for children, uh, for the disabled. Uh, it's just so many uh, programs are going to be impacted by the growing debt. And then we got in April of, of this year, the latter part of April, we're supposed to raise the debt ceiling. The yeah. debt ceiling, when you raise it, allows the administration to borrow more money to spend. And at some point in time, in my humble opinion, there's going to be a collapse. Do you think they're going to raise the debt ceiling? It's going to be an interesting uh, I debate. Mean, uh, I will be one of those that uh, will not vote to raise the debt ceiling because I know, I know we're not going to pay for it. I am for uh, tax relief as long as you pay for it. I'm for the infrastructure bill as long as you pay for it. But that's what we do up here in Washington we just pass these bills that are not paid for, waiting for the next generation to pay for it. But, too, you're going to have to cut social programs if you are t today. Well, that's, that's the whole key. Uh, I thought that uh, uh, Mr. Trump said something during the campaign that he would not spend any more money than we bring in in tax revenues. Well, that seems to be going by the wayside because he's talking about an infrastructure bill of tr trillions of dollars. He's talking about a wall, another trillions of dollars. Uh, and he's talking about tax cuts, another trillions of dollars. But, and maybe he will in time, given the benefit of the doubt. But right now, he's not telling us how we're going to pay for it. How can we talk about a wall when we're talking about the question of social areas, of the aging, uh, health care, and, and, and things of that sort? Mr. Wolf, I, th I, I think that you can't do it. You can certainly talk about it, but if you don't start trying to figure out, uh, and we owe that to the next generation, uh, we need to let the next generation know that uh, we have a responsibility when it comes to physical matters, that we must be more prudent with how we spend the taxpayers' money. Uh, and that, you know, like I talked about in the first segment, buying goats, uh, nine goats for $6 million uh, is crazy. Uh, I talked about paying the uh, ghost soldiers, meaning the 200,000 Afghans that don't even exist. We paid over several billions of dollars to, to soldiers that don't exist. I mean, at some point in time, somebody's got to get a handle on this situation, or these other countries, including China, mm -hmm. who are buying our debt, are going to say, pay up now, and then we're going to be in trouble. Uh, tell me, uh, with this whole question, of service to the to the nation uh, that 
is a, it's a privilege more than anything else for you to serve in the country. Well, uh, what is your opinion on getting more people involved in the question of, of uh, uh, military service, compulsory military service? Well, I think this t kind of ties into talking about all this, these uh, uh, foreign involvements that we get involved in that George Washington warned this country about. Uh, I think that Charlie Rangel, who you know well, is a good friend of mine, <coughs> who used to serve in the Congress, um, he always felt that we needed a draft and for two reasons. One, to make sure that we had a, a quick supply of young men and women uh, to go in the military if we were in a, a real international fight, so to speak. Uh, but also he felt that if you had the draft, then more moms and dads who don't want their children to be drafted are going to be more oriented to policies like Afghanistan, like Syria and these other countries. And I think he's probably right. Um, too easy. I, again, I have Camp Lejeune Marine Base in my district. And uh, too many times it's just human nature that you say, well, they have a voluntary army and Marine Corps and Navy and Air Force. Uh, you know, people don't think about it as if it was my son or daughter who might get called up to go to Afghanistan or to Syria. So um, I think Charlie, I miss Charlie Wrangell. He's retired now, as you know, but uh, he and I got along very well. He, I'm a Republican, he's a Democrat, but we got along very well. And we did talk about this issue of getting the American people involved and felt that one of those ways to get the American people involved is to institute the draft. Now, uh, that has been popular and unpopular even in the days that I was here. Yep. Uh, and it wasn't in, in the Vietnam War, it wasn't until we uh, made some steps toward that uh, that we ended that war. Uh, well, to, to me, um, I just think, and you know how many protests they had during the Vietnam War, and I, I remember them too, that the people got so involved they felt like the policy had no end to it. And uh, that's one reason that, that I've done this. Uh, this bill because I looked at the Vietnam War and read some information about that time. The, um, the Senate and the House also cut the money out when Nixon That's became right. the president. You Joe might have been Adabo, here at the time. Joe Adabo was chairman of the Appropriations Subcommittee that cut that out. Well, that's, that got the attention because that right. started getting the troops home. Uh, tell me, uh, the president has said uh, that we must do something with our military today and that we don't have the readiness that we had before. Is that true? You're a member of the Well, I think it's yeah. true about the readiness. Um, that's why I very outspoken again about taking the money we're spending in these foreign countries and not talking about fighting ISIS. We got to fight ISIS. We got to eliminate ISIS. But the point I'm trying to make is that we keep spending all this money out here when we need to rebuild a military. And we got pilots that are not getting enough hours. I know you were a pilot prior to World War II. And, and the fact is that we've got a lot of shortcomings in our military that we need to, put, to invest in. Um, so it's going to be an interesting year. We have a shortage of pilots today, don't we? Shortage and the time that many of the pilots who get through pilot school in the military will not get much time in the air. Well, I want to thank you very much for appearing here, taking time out from an extraordinary uh, schedule that you must be keeping. Well, Mr. Wolf, thank you. It is, uh, I've been here 22 years, and this has been a very interesting three months of a new administration and a new Congress. It's kind of <laughs> like the world's upside down right now. Again, my thanks to you, Walter Jones, thank for you. appearing here. And I know if our audience would like to send a question to you, you'd be very happy to answer them. No, it certainly would. They can go on our, uh, call our office or go on the internet and uh, communicate with us, and uh, we'd be delighted to get back with them. Again, our thanks, and hope Thank you'll you. come back again. And Look forward to future. it. Thank you so much. Thank you.